Hello everybody. This video is going to be some pretty straightforward cut and dry vehicle rendering <coughs> techniques. I've started out with a few silhouettes of a vaguely science fiction-y truck design. I've chosen silhouette number two to develop into a full render. So before I get into the actual illustration, I'm just going to sort of notes to myself, just flesh out a 3D perspective view of what that truck design is going to look like, just so I sort of can consolidate how the masses are laying out among themselves. Um, I've gone ahead and modeled the wheels in Blender because uh, I just want to save some time and, and uh, not have to worry about drawing all of those little tread details which are going to just take forever. I'm more <coughs> interested in laying out the overall shapes of the, of the truck design wheels obviously being pretty much the same design regardless of, of what kind of vehicle it is. Uh, this, this design is, as you can see, it's from that silhouette way up there, pretty close in science fiction-y, like it's some sort of utility vehicle that would probably be showing up in a, a quarry, maybe on some sort of uh, Earth-like alien planet. It's just enough of a, the, the design deviates just enough from what we see in the real world to indicate that it's for some sort of science fiction project, maybe like uh, a space ex exploration game or something like that. But it's still very believable, still pretty close to the kind of technologies that we're accustomed to. It doesn't have like some sort of magical levitating device or something. Um, so it's, it's an, an exercise in in creating something that's that's you know clear. Even though a, a truck design engineer would probably laugh at that thing and and say it would never actually be uh, a practical design, but it's still it's still believable enough where people can can imagine that it would actually work and do its its job and stuff like that. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've put another layer on top and set the blend mode to multiply mode so that I can just do rough design line work to sketch out my masses and forms. I'm using the wheels to develop a rough sense of where my perspective lines are. I'm still keeping the perspective stuff pretty loose. Uh, I'll go in and tweak that later. I just want to create all of the really big global decisions right now. And I'm, I've, I've just made one big orange blob that's the whole truck body. And I'm just going in there very quickly and creating my overall general light and shadow distribution. I've already set up a light in the 3D model that I used to create the wheels where the light is sort of coming from the upper right corner and casting some shadow on the wheels. So now I'm going to replicate that light solution on my rendering itself. Um, again, sticking with my big global um, <clears throat> light and color situation, I've immediately jumped in and started mapping out the environment that this vehicle is going to be sitting in. If this were a very cut and dry industrial design presentation, maybe that object would just be sitting in a blank white background to really just focus attention on, on that object. But in this case, since it's a vehicle, I'm just going to add a little bit of a context. You know, this truck looks like it's used for hauling big amounts of dirt or something. So I'm assuming that it's going to be sitting in a, a rock quarry or something. And I'm just going to put some 
indications of the light and shadow and color environment that surrounds it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to very quickly start to pull colors from my environment and drop it into the rendering of the actual vehicle. Like in, you can start, I've already sampled from that sky color and I'm adding that blue into the shadow areas of the vehicle because that blue color is going to be reflecting around the object and in the shaded area of the object where that bright key light from the sun isn't washing everything out in the shadows you're going to see some of those subtle reflections of things like the the skylight and also subtle reflections of the the light coming bouncing up off of the ground so uh, you can see there's that yellowish color um, at, the, at the very bottom of the wheel axle that's bouncing up from the ground um, I'm starting to add a little bit of detail, just that sort of, you can see in the silhouette, there's that sort of circular shape, which perspective-wise is not really perfect yet. I'm still going to go tweak that later on, but again, it's just about laying in the big global decisions right now, not worrying about uh, <laughs> if everything's technically perfect yet. Uh, and I'm also going to start adding some very underlying texture. So I, I don't want the object to actually have literally this kind of peeled paint texture. I'm just adding some, uh, some random variations that will inform my brush strokes later on. Uh, I didn't like that first texture, so I'm just, again, this is, this is a, this is a phase in the drawing where I'm experimenting and making mistakes didn't like the first texture so I'm gonna put in a different one and by the end by the time this drawing is complete these textures I'm playing with right here will pretty much be unrecognizable they're just adding very slight color and texture variations to the finished product and it's sort of like the equivalent of painting on a roughly gessoed canvas or a canvas that's very smoothly polished. That kind of texture is going to inform the brush strokes of the final piece. Right now I'm starting to get a little bit more technical, uh, correcting the perspective of that ellipse detail on the, on the side of the truck bed. Uh, if you look at the ellipses on the wheel hubs, this, this circle sits right in the middle of those, so it should be a little bit slimmer of an ellipse than the front wheel and a little bit fatter than the hub of the rear wheel. So I just had to adjust that. And uh, technically, if you, if you wanna get really into being a perspective nerd, it's not really a symmetrical ellipse. Those circles are actually the, the front, the, the left part of the ellipse is going to be a little bit more round than the right half of the ellipse because a, pers a circle sitting in perspective is is not going to be a, a symmetrical circle. Uh, in in the case of truck wheels, ninety percent of the time you can really use a a, a a symmetrical ellipse to describe that wheel, and no one will notice, but if you start to make very big circular objects, like let's say a swimming pool or something, uh, you'll start to get distortions if you use a symmetrical ellipse. So you have to be a little bit more subtle. I'm just sort of throwing that out there as a word of caution uh, that uh, some people, especially back in the day, you know, would use like an ellipse guide to just sort of draw uh, wheels and stuff, but uh, really, you have to be a little bit more subtle about how you lay out circles in perspective, just as uh, something to think about. Um, what I'm doing right now is starting to get into specific textures. So rather than those very generic grainy textures that I put in earlier, I'm starting to take photographs of objects that look kind of vaguely industrial in some way. I don't know what they what they actually 
are doing on that vehicle. Uh, the, this is from from an Israeli troop character, the carrier. The previous one, I think, was like a, a valve head from an from an engine. So they are not literally textures that relate to what's going on in that vehicle. They're just starting to add a a kind of a groundwork for creating some little uh, vaguely technical looking detail that the viewer will see like, oh yeah, that looks very important, but I don't really actually know what it is, but it's science fiction. It doesn't have to have a precise engineering purpose. Um, right now I'm starting to finesse those 3D rendered wheels a little bit. So I've created a layer and set the blend mode to color. So I'm starting to pull colors from my environment and using them to tint the gray scale of that 3D rendering and introducing some actual hue in there. And I'm also beefing up the contrast of the light and shadow a little bit just to bring that very mellow light and shadow of the 3D rendering into the more harsh sunlight of the rest of the rendering. And the way I'm doing that is I'm just creating interim layers. So I do a layer right now. I've, I've just, I've created a, a layer, set the blend mode to multiply and making very rough brush strokes on it. Don't care about very precisely starting and ending my brush strokes. I just want that gesture that very quick texture. And then I'm gonna erase the part of the interim layer that I don't want, and then just drop it right down on the layer below. Once, once the purpose of that inter interim layer is completed, I'm just gonna drop it down. There's no reason to keep it as a separate layer because I tend to like to work with as few layers as possible and, uh, and just sort of do a lot of quick and dirty painting, uh, which is mostly because my I really cut my teeth in traditional media where you only have one layer to work with. So I like to just sort of mush color around on the same layer rather than get into a lot of very fancy uh, superstructures of, of layers in Photoshop. Again, another interim layer here, laying in the cast shadow from from the uh, from that dump truck bed set to multiply mode. Once I'm done with it, I drop it back down. Uh, still trying to keep my big overall light shadow and mass relationships at the same level of finish rather than going in and really getting into the, the noodling. Uh, in my opinion, or, or as notes to myself, I would say like this, this rendering is probably about 90% done for me because I've laid in all of my masses, shapes, lights, colors, and, and shadows. And it's now just a question of cleaning everything up and adding the kind of detail that is going to be necessary if you're showing this to an art director or or to a production team uh, they're going to need to to know more specific stuff but as the designer all of my decisions have mostly been made at this at this point so so for me everything else now is is pretty much just making this into a, a presentation piece and uh, this sort of the, the driver's cab just uh, is essentially a box made out of steel frames. So that's super easy to draw. You can see the bottom of that driver's cab again has the color of the ground sampled and then painted. So I've, I've sort of, I'm bouncing light from the ground up into the bottom of that driver's cab just to keep everything all keep that object very solidly grounded in its environment. So I like to sample 
all of my local local colors and then just sort of slightly attenuate them as as I paint on top of the the object itself and again now I'm starting to sample some textures and lay them on top and I'm actually going to not completely obliterate those new textures I'm, I'm going to keep just a slight hint of those textures remaining in the drawing but I'm using them really as a starting off point to create all of my small noodly details so like those those pulleys there parts of them remain but parts of them get covered up so it just you can sort of see that there's some technical things going on but it's not really clear what they are but they're but they're definitely integrated into the object in in a, a purposeful way and typically when I start cleaning up some of my smaller details and stuff I like to jump around a lot I don't want to get completely fixated on on each re region and really bring it up to a very high level of finish and then the rest of the the drawing is still kind of uh, rough I just I think uh, I think personally as an artist I like to keep my eye fresh like if I keep looking at this one panel for a really long time and bring it up to perfect finish I'm just gonna get too fixated on on detail and and uh, put a lot more kind of noodly detail in there than it really needs so I like to jump around and uh, and just sort of look at each each region of the drawing from a fresh perspective and and keep everything keep all my gestures and keep all my my decisions very uh, fresh and, and spontaneous and now I've, I've added another interim layer and I'm kind of jumbling up that texture so I'm just going in with a, a brush that's it's my palette knife brush which is essentially just a hundred pixel wide line that I scrub in various at various angles and I'm just pulling out some of the detail of that of that photo texture that I put on there and obliterating other areas and also just adding completely spontaneous gestures sometimes I just scrub my arm back and forth and see what happens just to sort of create some new shapes and geometry that I would not have thought of if I really tried to get too analytical about the whole thing and now I'm again this was like a, a, a valve cover from an from an engine but it was a very flat photograph and I'm starting to integrate that into the actual object and adding uh, cast shadows to all of those various doodads which I have no idea what what they do I mean it's, it's this thing is essentially a dump truck so I don't know what all those very important looking gizmos are there for but it just adds some sort of uh, uh, narrative or or um, creates some sort of new new purpose or context for this design that has to do with with uh, whatever purpose it has in its imaginary science fiction story but I'm mostly just obliterating stuff and creating geometries that respond to that under underlying texture but but are definitely making new shapes and uh, and new geometries that were not part of what that that original texture was and once I've kind of played around with that I'll eventually collapse that that interim layer down because uh, again at this point I want I want my the gesture of my brush strokes to be loose and and swish and sort of swishy and I don't want to get too hung up on on the the you know coloring within the lines I definitely want to color outside of the lines and then uh, cleaned up later and uh, I was never really happy with those with those uh, kind of 
pulleys or whatever that were down at that axle. So I went in, changed it out, uh, found, I think it was a, a photograph of someone who built like a, a plastic model kit. And I just took some of those, some of those parts. And I definitely like the way the, the geometry looks, but the color and lighting doesn't make sense for this drawing. So, so now I need to come in and integrate that photograph into the local color and light and shadow environment of this rendering and as with everything else I'm doing that by sampling the colors of the environment that this object is sitting in and loosely scrubbing over that with with a brush uh, I have the the opacity of that brush set to be sensitive to how hard I'm scrubbing with with my uh, with my pen tablet so I can general I can gradually build up colors that that cover up the previous information underneath it but uh, but start to obscure and obliterate most of it so there's just like little hints of, of stuff that again looks like important and purposeful but nobody really knows what it does and this uh, a great source for sort of just random important looking science fictiony textures is is uh, people who build plastic model kits of, of tanks or or like weird made up science fi fiction things if you just take like a little sample of of that photograph that is maybe you know 10 percent of the original design and just slap it in there as as a starting off point it creates just a nice hint of a texture that uh adds some some grit or believability to the drawing but you can't really tell what's actually going on and uh <clears throat> That's I'm starting to build up the the driver's seat of this vehicle, and I started out, like I said, with some sort of texture of of random machinery and just sort of pulled out shapes and colors that look like there's something going on, but um, you won't really be able to to recognize specifically what's going on once I've started to get my my details to a pretty decent level I want to go back in and uh, and just double check all of my local uh, I'm sorry double check all of my global relationships and I'm going to go back in with another interim layer set to multiply blend mode and really beef up the contrast between the lit and shaded side of that vehicle. So I really want, especially that corner right where the light turns to be like even darker than, than what you would expect when you're looking at the shaded side of an object just to really exaggerate that turning of the corner and exaggerate the, the lit and shaded side of the vehicle, which uh, corresponds to the way that brain, that the brain processes information. Like when, when the eye gives information about what it's seeing to the brain, the brain will, will kind of make, make an exaggerated catalog of of that information so a, a shadow will will be perceived as being even darker than dark and a lit surface will be perceived as being even lighter than light so I like to have my renderings recapitulate that what's going on in the brain where where my my corners where where edges turn become even darker than just a, a 
just what the actual planes are doing and and my highlights where where there are, are corners that are being hit by the sunlight are even brighter and more sparkly than what what a, a camera would see because it's just recreating what the brain does anyway like what I'm doing right now again just adding even more uh, global adjustments to increase the contrast of those lights and shadows by and and also where the where the where the edge of that cast shadow is inside of the wheel hub becomes even darker than the rest of the shadow and where that that light from the ground is bouncing up into the wheel hub becomes a very like exaggerated light that that kind of light probably wouldn't show up in a photograph but in the rendering i just want to make everything a little bit more cartoony and, and exaggerated um right now i feel that that background i like the idea of having that context like this this vehicle is sitting in some sort of a rock quarry but I feel like it's it's still kind of taking over too much of the composition. I feel uh, it needs to be made less of a, a dramatic presence in the overall uh, illustration. So I'm just going to knock those cliffs back a little bit, add a bunch of atmospheric perspective to just uh, indicate that there's stuff going on but I don't want it to have as much of a of a presence, and I uh, I would say that the rendering of the vehicle is pretty much like ninety nine percent finished. All of this process is just continuing the process of noodling all of my details, and it's time to go back in and really make that vehicle sit in its background properly and fine tune the cast shadows, fine tune the the lights and colors that are happening within that cast shadow, I'm starting to add a little bit of reflection of the sky color in the cast shadow, which which you would you would see in every part of the cast shadow except the part that's right under the wheel, because the wheel would be obscuring the reflected blue color of the sky, which right now is making my ground look a little bit too shiny i'm gonna have to uh fine tune that uh, i'm gonna add a scale figure that I, I took her from another um design that i did a while ago of of i think some sort of a a, a uh i don't know some uh, some other sort of small vehicle uh and just gonna start integrating the driver into the the environment as well and then to add a few just cast shadows and stuff uh, I can keep that pretty loose because the figure is just there to show scale don't have to get too crazy about that also just a few small details like this uh, just want to add like a safety grill on the on the uh, driver's cabin I think I'm gonna add a few other very small details like like some uh, some nighttime headlights and stuff like that but all this stuff is just sort of adding a little bit of personal touch to the design just so it looks more believable as a as an object but I would say really that's in terms of selling the design that that illustration is pretty much done um, yeah just went on the internet and grabbed some photographs of, of like some four wheel drive truck roof headlights and gonna use that that as a starting point to to make some uh, nighttime driving lights. Uh, and as usual, I'll just paint over those and add paint over those with with uh, with my colors, with my brushes blend mode set to multiply and just start to add the local colors of the environment onto those head headlights so they do so that they don't look like I just uh, pasted a photograph on top of my 
my rendering and add some random brush strokes just so it looks a little bit more gestural rather than a collage of photographs because even though I've used a lot of photographs in this rendering I don't want it to look as if it's a, a matte painting or or too photorealistic I want to keep a little bit of gesture in there just to to show that it, this is still like a, a preliminary design work in progress uh, and that uh, it can still be fine-tuned if if an art director wants to uh, wants to change stuff it shouldn't look like it's like it's you know already um, built into into the game um, all right so that's pretty much the final piece I think I still went in there and added a few things uh, just a few smaller noodly details but that's uh, pretty much the piece there and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the process of that and uh, learned a few tricks maybe and anyway I'll talk to you next time all right take care bye